This is Jeremy Comel, and welcome to Lipid Match Flow Tutorial Part 4. Now we'll discuss, once you have run Lipid Match Flow, how to look at the outputs. So you should have your output folder. So for example, here's the demo we did. And you'll have two folders, temporary work and Lipid Match Run. In Lipid Match Run, you double click that folder. You'll see all the converted files as well as the peak list used for identification. And then you go to output. The file that you'll be most interested in is posneg underscore molecular species. This is the list of all your lipids identified and their peak areas, combining positive and negative polarity data. If you don't have positive and negative polarity data, then you'll also have the pause and neg molecular species files that you can look at. Now, if we double click this file, we can see a row ID, and this is in relationship to MZ mine. So if we wanted to look at any of these peaks and how they were integrated, we can. I'll show you that a little bit later. Then you have your mass to charge values and your retention time for that feature. And then each of your samples and their respective peak areas. Now, Lipid Match gives you a number of columns. So there's the ID ranked. So, for example, this is scored as one underscore, meaning you saw both fatty acids for that lipid. It would be two underscore if you happen to use AIF for thermo and it was identified. 3 underscore, so if we scroll down, means that it was only identified by class-specific fragmentation, not fatty acid-specific fragmentation. And 4 underscores are not in here, but if you look at the pause id and neg id files, you can see what was identified just by exact mass. Now, you'll see for some of them, for example, let's say these cardiolipins, where the individual fatty acids weren't observed, but you could get a fragment of each um, phospholipid in the sense cardiolipin is made out of two phospholipids. So in our annotation style, we sum those carbons in double bonds. You can see that there's a pipe here. A pipe separates that you identified two different cardiolipins under the same feature. They're ranked by the sum of signal intensity. So if we click here, we can see that there was a two-fold increase in the first hit for cardiolipins. And so this cardiolipin is probably much more abundant and contributing more to the signal than this cardiolipin. In addition, we can see just the class. So if you want to do some class-based statistics, you have a column with just the lipid classes. The addicts at maximum intensity, so what was the first hit? Same thing for class. And then whether only one class or multiple classes were observed. So if we scroll down, in this case, we have PCs and PEs identified under the same feature. And so in this case, we can't discern which class adds up to the most um, most dominant within that peak. Also, when we combine addicts, sometimes you get multiple addict confirmations for a certain feature, and that gives you added confidence. So, for example, in this case with LPC 18.0, we saw both a protonated and sodiated addict, and 20 colon 3, we see both the formate and protonated addict uh, identified. So that will be your file. Uh, in the next tutorial, we can talk and walk you through how to do statistics using MetaboAnalyst using this file. Now I'll just go over some additional files that you can get. So if you go into your data dependent folder, you have your neg, one's only confirmed by class and negative ion mode, one's in positive ion mode, and only confirmed by class and positive ion mode. 
we go to positive, confirm lipids, and let's say we want to look at DGs, and there are certain DGs we want to know how they were identified. We can double click this file. And so here you have your DGs, different species, and then your different fragment ions. And so you can see in one DG, we were able to see numerous fragment ions, and the other DG is just these most abundant ions. Then you can also see at what retention time these fragment ions were observed, how many scans across a peak were these fragment ions observed, what was the signal intensity for these fragment ions observed, what were the masses, and then what were the theoretical masses for these fragment ions. In additional files, you can see the parameters that were used, the mass accuracy, etc. You can also see, um, if you go to all, for example, all of the BMPs that were identified by exact mass, even the ones that weren't identified, and what fragments were observed. In case there's one you expected, but you missed something. So we talked about the temporary work, having the MZ mine converted files. It has the batch files, so you can see the parameters there as well. Um, it also has CSV files um, with the feature tables that were created and the mzmine files. So you could open up these mzmine files. You want to take the demo ones or whatever your project name was. Those are the final mzmine files. Open them up in mzmine and you can actually scroll through the peaks uh, that were detected if you want to look more closely at the peak detection. So that will conclude this tutorial.